Oh shit, what's up, fuck. All right, what's up everybody? Christopher Leon Johnson here. So, I got my camera on, but okay. So happy Tuesday, happy All Topic Tuesday. Happy All Topic Tuesday. The um, 29th of 2024. So, basically, today, uh, at 10 o'clock, you see these beautiful City Hall steps, which is empty. Well, they have the uh, line there because I think they might have a press conference. I don't know. Uh, never know because at 10 o'clock this morning, time now is currently 9, 10 a.m. At 10 o'clock in the morning, on the dot, or probably a little late, but I think they got to do it at 10 o'clock in the morning because uh, uh, 1 o'clock, there's going to be inside the, the chambers, there's going to be a hearing about uh, the hospitals. I might not attend that hearing. I might actually submit a written testimony because it's gonna be a lot of people and and people know how I stand about the hospital closings. It's bullshit. The hospital closings are bullshit and that's what it is. Uh, it's nothing but a land grab. So at 12 o'clock today on the steps, there's gonna be a big rally. I think all the state senators and state assembly members and the people that's trying to get to political office and that covers the second, the, the fourth district that covers the fourth district of um, the fourth district of um, of uh, Key Powers District, the fourth district, which covers like Ben Wexler, uh, Ben Wexler. He's running for state assembly, you know, state city council, uh, Ra Rachel, ba uh, Rachel Storch, the former state, uh, some, um, the former state legislature from Missouri, who's running and Faith Bondi, who's going to be backed by like Andrew Fine. So basically, um, basically, what's happening is that 12 at, they all be going to be, probably gonna, they probably won't be there because they're all Yimbies, except like Faith, um, Rachel, and um, Rachel, and um, Rachel, and uh, Ben are both Yimbies. They both want that Yimby endorsement for opening up wall. So, expect nothing to happen um expect nothing to really really happen uh with that but uh there's two people that's running for city council in the second district her name is uh sarah batchel who used to be the girlfriend for uh bill de blasio and she's on community board three behind community board three and um harvey epstein the state assembly member people might call him the front runner all the favorite candidate to win because he's a state assembly member and then you have uh this other chick that's named um Andrea Gerilio who's running for city council for the sec they might be there today I don't know but uh expect all the non-profits be there like uh village uh village of preservation group um mainly CIDNY uh you know it's gonna be a lot of those organizations there but I might just I don't know because I'm, I'm I'm waiting to testify to, at 10 o'clock for the uh, the, the government, the governmental hearing about DCAS real estate deals. So basically what's going on with the DCAS real estate situation is that in the news, in the news, uh, um, one of Eric Adams' close confidants, uh, former state senator of my district, uh, the 20th district, Jesse Hamilton, got busted in 4K of rigging deals for um, DCAS real estate for Eric Adams donors. So everybody's now pissed off about the stuff and they're having a hearing at 10 o'clock about uh, the dealings of Jesse Hamilton, Eric Adams and DCAS and trying to figure out uh, what's, why the hell they are doing pay to play deals, pay to play and blatant corruption deals with uh, DCAS real estate. So basically DCAS, is the um, a, a government agency that oversees the uh, real estate that every city owned building is part of. So DCAS oversees the real estate. Uh, DCAS, they, they operate, they do the operations of uh, the facilities. Like, um, not here, but they do, they do have contract, they like City Hall, City Hall, right there in that that gate over there. Um, 
one Century Street. Uh, there's a lot of buildings. Anything that's owned by the city, DCAS has um, full operations of that location. And by the way, here, here you see this, uh, see this newsstand. Very soon, they're gonna remove this newsstand and turn it into a deliverista hub, which I'm totally against because everybody knows damn well that the reason they're doing this is because Schumer has given this corrupt nonprofit uh, millions of dollars to put this in right there. And the funny thing about it is that uh, Manhattan Community Board won, which covered this district, this area right here, City Hall basically, was against the hub. But we all know how that goes. Help lobbyists, consultants, bully organizations like Transportation Alternatives, um, Open Plans, and Chuck Schumer, it was gonna go through anyway. I spoke against it and I said, why? Because look, here's the thing. I, have, I am not against um, deliveristas or any type of um, essential worker or any worker uh, being catered to, uh, making sure they're safe. They get, they get bathrooms and they have bathroom breaks and make sure that they have, they, they, get, um, they get treated like human beings, right? No problem with that. But it's always the nonprofits and the people that's behind it I'll be against. And sometimes, there are times that the concept might be looking good on paper, but just because the people that's behind it or that's part of it, I'll be against it. I'll say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna support this. I will never support it. Because I made this clip about Los Angeles News Tools, right? That's the one I always see the, the, the show over there, right? They are a vanity project. They are a vanity project under a project. Right, Los Angeles Nistos is not even a nonprofit. Los Angeles Nistos is basically a campaign. It's a campaign, a long campaign, a overused campaign that is under a vanity project organization that's called the Worker Justice Project. The Worker Justice Project is under Third Sector New England. Third Sector New England is based in New England, Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. What happens, how city council works, how, how this game go with the with that organization. Dirt Second New England oversees Worker Justice Project. Now, when people try to do research about Worker Justice Project and about their finances, like a 990, is nowhere to be found because they're not a registered nonprofit. They are a project, like an organization that is under a nonprofit that is called Dirt Second New England. So the only way you could research the funding is through Dirt Second New England. Now the problem is with that is Dirt Second New England, they oversee a lot of other organizations and the way they report it is that they report all the money they get from everybody in the country because they work with a lot of organizations in, New in Boston, the Boston area and other places like Pennsylvania and shit like that. And what happens guys is None of the money can be accounted for. None of the money can really be accounted for. Nobody, including me, could ever find out of how much money that the Worker Justice Project people get paid. Like Liggy Galapa, uh, Antonio Salis, uh, Alejandro, um, Tough Tony, uh, and all the people like uh, Gustavo, and all these other characters that's part of LDU. Nobody, including me, would never know how much Liggy are getting paid, how much is her salary, how much money she's getting paid out of this prop, this organization. Now, not only me want to know how much money she's getting paid because they get paid all this money from the government. They sent the U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, Gillibrand, um, Eric Adams, the controller. They get they get, they got honored yesterday, and they're gonna have a press conference at One Street Street later on today, eleven o'clock. But look, but look, right make the uh these organizations like she get they get all that money and they refuse to be held accountable for their money and everybody has the right to know uh, where that money is going everybody has the right to know where that money's going and everybody has the right to know how much you, how much these guys are getting paid for their their actions and stuff like that they have every right to get paid every right to know and that's the problem guys and that's the big problem 
right? That's the big problem, right? And it's a, it's a big issue. Now, like I said, some concepts look good on paper, but because certain people that's behind it, or that's part of it, or they get exposed for being part of it, that's why I'm against, that's why I be against certain things. Like, it's like Roosevelt. Yeah, Roosevelt Avenue is a problem. Roosevelt Avenue is a problem. A big problem. A big problem, right? A big problem. Let's see what time is, 9.20. But look who's leading the road, the anti-Roosevelt Avenue initiative. It's Hiram Montserrat. Hiram Montserrat is nothing but a third-rate opportunist that will do anything to get back into political office. Hiram know that Roosevelt Avenue is a big issue in that area, right? Roosevelt Avenue basically covers from 61st Street, 61st all the way to 103rd, right? 63rd, 61st Avenue, Road, Woodside, all the way to 103rd. But his district covers like 103rd at 103rd. And right over at 103rd is Corona Plaza, right? And I'll make this clear to everybody out here, right? I make this clear everybody out here, like Candid, Candid Chris Johnson, Candid Chris, Candid Chris Johnson. I am not against anybody trying to make a living in New York City. I am not anti. I am not anti migrant. I am not anti illegal immigrant. I am not anti like oh fuck these guys are trying to make make the money. But what not going to be tolerated by me is people that know that. You're competing, you're trying to undermine, purpose undermine vendors and businesses that have to go through a lot of compliance to order to stay in business. And what I'm talking about is it's like your food. In food, you have to in food, you have to make sure that food is stored a certain way. You cannot sell expired food. And certain food will be thrown out in the nighttime. Certain food to be stored, certain food to be stored in certain certain positions, certain spots, right? And if you don't comply with that, fines could be hefty, and even a seventy-five dollar fine could be a lot of money to somebody. Could be a lot to somebody, right? That's why it matters. But when you have people that don't have to follow the law and they know they don't have to follow the law like the legal vendors because of these nonprofits like the street vendor project that runs the city council that everybody know that they run the city council and they run the council and uh they run the council and uh they get to speak first. If it's 250, if it's like 150 speakers and 85%, 85, like 100 of them or 130 of those speakers are members of Street the Project, they all get to speak first. Even if it's for the, if, it, if they all co-sign the same shit and they get more time. And I'm making a big shit about the city council. I, I make a big shit about it. I think it's stopping it, but they, they own the city council. They own the state assembly. They own the state senate. They own our little bitch ass, a little bitch ass, clown ass, fuck boy of a, a, a Queensboro president. They own them all. They own them. They own these elected officials. They own these elected officials. And that's the problem here. They own these elected officials. But when you, but when you're as an advocate, so-called advocate like Hiram, and he's not calling this stuff out, he's not calling these organizations out like the Street Vendor Project and Make the Road New York. Make the Road New York, people that wake up, a corrupt nonprofit, a real corrupt nonprofit, real corrupt nonprofit. And Make the Road New York, nothing will ever change. Because these nonprofits know that if nobody's calling them out on their both. Oh, they bullshit. They get away with a lot of things. But the reason they all get scared of me, because 
I've been covering these guys. I know these guys' behavior. But these nonprofits know. I know their behavior. And you know what happens? And you know what happens, guys? Is, you know what happens? Is like, look, you know what happens? They know what I know. That they're fake. That they're that they're in in not in um insincere. They are not genuine. They uh, intimidate elected officials, and you see the elected officials' eyes and their their eyes and their behavior, their body their behavior, is that they don't want to be there, but they have to, because these nonprofits like make the road New York, make the road. And uh, uh, sweeping the project, they hoard a lot of votes. They have a lot of votes. And these elected officials, they get scared. So you know what happens is they have to show up to press conferences that they don't want to show up to. They have to co-sign things that they don't want to co-sign. They have to vote for bills that they don't want to vote for. And this is not just only with city council, like here, our city council. This happens in Albany with uh, state senate and state assembly. And it happens with the federal government, with Congress's US Senate. And it's because of these lobbyists, that's why. These lobbyist firms, they pay off a lot, they pay a lot of money to these lobby firms and the lobbyists run the show and they get scared of these, they get scared. These elected officials, some of them know that if they're in a district where they won their primary because of RCV and the, the, the rest of the competition was trash except for that one candidate that was giving them a hard time in 2021 or in 2018 or 2016 or 2020. They know they can be voted out. It's like in the uh, 25th district, like Shekar Christian, Jackson Heights. He has, he has 74th Avenue in Roosevelt. Shekar know that all they got to do is run someone against him. He got the door. Run uh, fucking Brian Romero or that opportunist scumbag Yi Andy Chen, and he's out the fucking door. Because a lot of these people, they will do anything for $148,000 paycheck. $148,000. That's why. That's the reason. It's all about the money. And a number of these people, they, they don't give a fuck about. Uh, conservatism and public safety and uh, fucking uh, rent uh, cancel rent and all these ideologies on all the sides. They see this as a grip. They see it as an opportunity to get paid. It's $148,000. Yeah, $148, and if you're in the state level, it's 142000 So it's all about money, guys. It's all about money. And that's what happens. And it's really disgusting. Oh, yeah, they're doing a lot of construction work this morning. Parks Department doing a lot of construction work. Um, so they, that'll be done by like an hour or two. And it's about to rain today anyway, so they, they're probably doing it inside. But yeah, at the end of the day, guys, it's, uh, it's just some bullshit. You know what I mean? So, wait, wait, wait. So at the end of the day, it's, uh, yeah, these politicians, they're scared of, they, they're scared of, uh, they're scared of, um, these elected officials. They're scared of these elected officials, you know what I'm saying? Um, they're really scared, uh, really scared of these, I mean, I mean, no, they're scared of these nonprofits. But the nonprofits, only, they run the show. They own the city and they do what they want the city council. Uh, because they give, they give a lot of money to elected officials. They give a lot of money to elected officials, and they they know who they got. They know who they own, like Sandy Nurse, who is chair of uh, criminal justice. But you know what happens is, uh, Street Bender Project has a big stranglehold with consumer worker protection. But we all know the games they play in the city council, where 
uh, Julie Menon, and like I said, I, I have no, like I said, I said a lot of things about her and I, I still hold it, but look, Julie is not that stupid. Julie is really power hungry and politically selfish. And what that means is a, a politically selfish person in government, like here, they will do anything to get what they want by any mean necessary. And if that means that if they have to introduce bills and uh, advocate for bills and get bills pushed through that will hurt businesses that special interests don't want in their way, she'll do it. And then you gotta understand that uh, Julie's one for speaker. She's going for speaker. I think she's gonna win. Uh, I, I I think that lady's going to win the speaker race because uh, Adrian Adams is fucking up. The speaker right now is fucking up and uh, the speaker is grooming, grooming uh, Amanda Faria to be speaker. Amanda is from the 18th district, like Soundview. That's her heart. That's her district, Soundview. They are grooming her to be speaker of the city council for 2026 after Adrian the, the parse at term limits. So what's happening here is Julie is really politically selfish. Uh, she only cares about her self-interest, her political ambitions. And but what happens is while at the same time Julie is politically selfish, politically selfish, Julie uh is scared of a lot of people in the city council because I don't think she not she don't know how to handle protests outside of office and handle the heat because Julie comes from money. Julie comes from money, right? Julie comes from uh, years of experience in government. She used to be the the, the commissioner of the Consumer Work Protection. She be she be a lawyer. She used to be a lot of things. So she's not really ready to handle real pressure from constituents and uh, special, in, like, um, controversial interests like the vocal New Yorks and the Make the Rolls and stuff like that. Julie's the elected type elected official that she want to do her thing, but she wants no criticism. She doesn't want nobody outside of office call her ass out for doing certain things. Now, when you're a politician, like a city council member or state, anything like that, it comes with the territory. One day, one how, somebody's going to call you out on your bullshit and on your shit, if you're not doing the right thing or they feel that you're not supportive of certain things or they're going to be outside your office calling you out and, and trying to intimidate you. Right? It happens a lot. But Judy don't understand that type of She thinks that like this shit, this council shit is like all pizza and blowjobs. She thinks the shit is like all cute where it's like, well, I'm getting paid $10,000 a month, like $12,000 12, a month. And I get to run around the city, shaking hands. People take people take photo of me. I'm a, I'm a star, shit like that. So people get starstruck with a politician now because the new thing, uh, politicians love this shit with people taking pictures of them. They love that shit. They get off on that shit. And people kissing their ass. And yeah, that's one aspect of being a politician in New York City, a council member. It's a star shit. It's superstar shit, right? Superstar. But there's another aspect that a lot of these politicians don't like. And they don't want to admit it is that they don't like it. They don't like it when people call them out, call them out on Twitter because they supported policies that that will ruin neighborhoods, that will ruin cities, that will ruin districts, that will ruin businesses, that will ruin lives. They don't like that shit. But here's the thing. When you when you when you decide to run at for office and when you win office and you do the paperwork and you swore you, you, you raise your hand to the Bible or the Quran or the Talmud or whatever the religious book that you believe in, and you tell the clerk that you solemnly swear to uh, be um, hold, uphold all the laws in the New York City Constitution or the New York State Constitution and um, and fight all enemies, uh, defend, this, defend the city and defend the country 
from all enemies, foreign, domestic, right? That's when you signed the deal. That's when you signed that deal to say, look, you signed the deal. There's, you're going to get criticized for what you do. And that's the territory. But Julie don't like that shit. And I don't know if somebody's going to tell us, say, look, this come with the territory. You want to sign, you want to support a bill that's going to ruin, that's going to hurt uh, small hotels, which I understand what's going on. You're going for speaker. You're going for speaker. And I get it. But you can't get mad if everybody's calling you out about it. It's like with uh, Bob Holden, right? I respect Bob. He's, he's pushing a bill that's going to really get make all these e-bikes here like like by example like the city bikes that's owned by lyft that's owned by lyft register but look there's gonna people that support it and there's gonna people that build that's gonna be against it but bob knows the territory bob knows that once you come elected official and you're getting paid to do the job you're getting paid to do the job you are going to have to deal with the territory. The territory is you are going to be praised for your job. People are going to want to take pictures with you. People are going to be kissing your ass, especially if you're female. Females, females, females get that advantage because they're hot. They, they, they're females. Kissing your ass. They're going to be on their knees. They're going to, they'll lick your boots. They'll lick the floor for you. They'll jump off the window for you. They'll kill someone for you. They'll do everything for you. But there's always an other side to the shit. There's always another side. And the problem with a lot of the deficiency days is that they don't like that other side. The other side is them getting criticized for the shit that they're not doing. The other side is them getting criticized for the stuff that they are doing, but people don't fucking like it. The other side is them getting fucking bird hound by people. The other side is them getting dog pie by people. The other side is them, they on Twitter make it a tweet and they get ratioed. The other side is when they uh, um, get a lot of backlash for what they do. That's the other side. That's the other side. Now, people just don't get it, but that's the other side of politics. And people like Julie don't understand that. People will praise you. People will criticize you. People will love you. People will hate you. People will like you. People will dislike you. And the problem with Julie Menon is that she doesn't... Oh, that was fucking bullshit. She doesn't like to be criticized. She doesn't like to be criticized. And that is crazy. Because if you're running for speaker and you're planning to run for speaker, that is the territory. That will be the big territory because when you're the speaker of city council, yeah, you have a security detail it's to make sure that a lot of crazy folks and lobbyists and little weirdos don't fuck with you. But at the same time, that, look, look, Julie, when you become the speaker, you're gonna get criticism from everybody because everybody's gonna want their bill to get passed. Everybody's gonna want their bill to get pushed through the city council. And you will have the, the power to do that as the speaker. Everybody wants their bill to be heard on that floor, like at public panels. You're the speaker, you the speaker have a power for that. You have the power. You have a lot of power as speaker. And you want that power, but the power comes with a price. Julie, the power comes with a price. The power comes with a price, Julie Menon. And if you're not ready to take, not ready to the, the, the risk, uh, take the price, then don't run for speaker. Don't run for speaker. Don't run for speaker, guys. Just stay a council member, try to run for majority leader, and that's it. Don't be speaker. If you're not ready to take the price, of being speaker and that means by having the power to do a lot of things which will consist of praise and, and criticism don't take the fucking job 
don't take the job. That's what I gotta say. And like I said, today at 10 o'clock, let's see what time is now. Oh, this fucking park is a fucking mess, man. It's like a fucking trip hazard. All right, 9.39. The problem with the city council today at, at 10 o'clock is that at 10 o'clock, there's gonna be a hearing for uh, DCAS with our luxury oil uh, chair, Linky, AKA Linky Wrestler, Linky Wrestler. He's gonna have a hearing about DCAS and their deals. They gotta have a, 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 a thing about their deals, right? About those deals in the city council with the DCAS real estate. So it's a big issue with real estate. Like I said earlier in the video that um, DCAS owns when they own city buildings, they operate the city building, they do the cleaning, they do all the technical work and, and shit like that. They, um, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, with, with DCAS and the deals, they oversee real estate deals. And what happens is uh, real estate deals. And what happens is, what happens is uh, they get contracts. And there's a lot of controversy with the contracts um, that Hamilton, who is my former state senator, the 20th district, has held brokered. And people gotta remember that Hamilton's a lawyer. Ham Jesse Hamilton's a lawyer. So let's make that clear. So today, guys, we're going, uh, I'm gonna go inside the uh, city council to uh, see this shit about fucking, uh, see this bullshit about the DCAS deal. Like I said before, like I said about Julie Menon, is that look, she's uh, politically selfish. I don't. I don't hate Julie. I, I think she know I don't hate her, but look, I'm gonna criticize her because she's doing a lot of things that she shouldn't be doing. She's a chair of consumer work protection. She oversees the hell these she oversees the New York City Consumer Work Protection. She oversees that agency, right? She oversees the agency. And what happens is there's in this in this area, because it's raining, but usually in the hot times and the there be a lot of vendors out here. A lot of vendors out here become an eyesore i say it's an eyesore and don't say that i fuck I, that's from that's from revenue revenue you use that word eyesore they call it they call shit eyesores so you won't get mad about that word eyesore get mad at revenue please but julie should be doing a lot of things as a as a democrat as a moderate dem that's a pro-life dem that's i think she's really conservative deep inside she's conservative as a democrat a conservative democrat really conservative but well, as a conservative Democrat, a conservative Dem like Julie Menon, she should be fighting to make sure none of these illegal vendors be inside this park or be around Park Row because it's fucking annoying. It's fucking annoying, but she scared these nonprofits because they let certain like the officials intimidate her to doing things for them that she shouldn't be doing. Like Sandy Nurse, like Sandy Nurse, and um, Shahana Hanif. They own those two elected officials and Carmen De La Rosa, they own those three. And what they do is say, all right, yo, we know that you guys don't share fucking consumer work protection, but we need you fucking tell her that if she doesn't do what you, she, you, need, you need to tell her that if she doesn't do what we want her to do, that we'll be outside her office and shit, or we'll be at her events, crashing her events, uh, calling her ass out for everything until she bucks in. And as the chair of the committee, bucking in means that uh, allowing certain bills to be heard that shouldn't be heard. At three, they, some some bills get ten fucking co-sponsors, like one prime sponsor and five co-sponsors, and that shit get heard in the city council. While bills like intro 606 that have 31, 31, 31 co-sponsors and one prime sponsor, 30 co-sponsors and one prime sponsor, uh doesn't get heard in the city council because they play these days. These nonprofits be intimidating these elected officials to tell other, like Sandy Nurse, Carmen De La Rosa, and Shahana Hanif to tell the chair, like Judy Menning, like, look, 
yo, we, yo, if you put this shit on the floor, or this is gonna be, you better put this on the floor and let us run the show, or fucking else. That means we're gonna be outside your office calling you every, like a racist, a fucking racist, anti-immigrant. Well, they'll call you every dirty game in the, every dirty game in the book. And it's gonna get covered by the media because they own the media. They, they get the media out, they order get social, they little bozo social media influencers out there, and you're fucked. Now, a person like me for Julie, I say, Julie, look, I can make you, I can help you become a speaker. I, we can work together. But there's certain things you gotta do, like, look, help, help us get these illegal vendors out of fucking City Hall Park. That'll be one thing I want. And two, we gotta fucking get this. We gotta fucking get. We gotta get a fuck Adrian Adams because Adrian Adams is a piece of shit. We gotta get Adrian Adams. We gotta get Adrian Adams. That's two things we might. We gotta. We gotta neutralize Adrian Adams. We gotta shut down Adrian Adams because she do a lot of shit that's fucking the city up. And three, you gotta get intro six six on the floor. If you do that, I, I make. I, I swear to God, I'll make you speaker. Relax. I'll make you speaker. You become speaker with my help. I know how to get these motherfuckers make you speaker. Facts. But that's a, that's a different story. But yeah, it's almost uh, 10 o'clock. It's 9.46 right now. I'm about to head inside the city council for the 10 o'clock hearing. Oh yeah, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's about the rain. It's about the rain, guys. And by the way, that's see that building right there, guys? That's the... Uh, the, the, the Verizon building, that's the really, the NYPD, uh, uh, the New York City Mayor's Office, the NYPD's uh, secret building. That's a different, that's a different topic. Some secret building shit, like where like, they have like the, you could just fucking drive in, like on the bottom level, you could just, you could just fucking drive in and go upstairs. And it's right next to one police plaza. So people, people saying, it, I'm not trying to be conspiracy there, but the truth of the matter of fact is they got secret offices in that building right there, secret offices. So I'm about to go inside to testify for this hearing and shit like that. Let me put my press pass on. So. Uh, fucking neck is like one thing about this shit is like the shit is huge. These press passes are fucking huge. So morning, morning, brother. Here for the hearing. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so people in New York City gotta be careful. It's gonna rain like cats. So, um, yeah. At the end of the day, it's uh, ten o'clock. There's gonna be a hearing uh, at City Hall, inside City Hall, at ten o'clock, at ten p.m., ten a.m. Uh, about decast and they dirty deals with uh, the city and, and certain fucking contractors. Which is no surprise that, uh, no surprise that this has been going on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and no surprise this is going on. Let me turn this on me, bitch. 